Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel. So let's do one more question on solving indefinite integrals using substitution as well as using partial fractions in these type of questions. So again, if you have not watched my previous video where we have used both substitution and partial fractions in order to solve one question, I would highly suggest you to first watch that video in order to get the full context of what we would be doing in this video. So again, in this expression over here, you see an exponential function expression over here. So in the denominator, you have a quadratic expression, but it is in terms of the exponential function, right? If we substitute e to the power t as x, we can write this denominator as simply x squared plus x plus one, right? And we know that when we have these quadratic expressions in the denominator, we usually use partial fractions in order to solve those type of integral problems, right? So let's do that. Let's use substitution first and assume our x to be e to the power t. And then we can clearly notice if it would be easier for us to use partial fractions or any other approach that can simplify this expression over here. So let's do that. If we assume our x to be e to the power t in this case, we know that we'll have to convert dt as well in terms of dx. So dx would be e to the power t dt, right? And now we can convert our integral expression as simply x square plus x plus one and over here, dt can simply be converted to dx over e to the power t. So if dt is dx over e to the power t, and we know that e to the power t is essentially x over here. So dt is basically dx over x only, right? And over here, we can fill this expression. In terms of dt, we can write dx over x in this case, right? And now your integral has been simplified to just calculating the integral of dx upon x times x squared plus x plus one, right? And now you see two factored out terms in the denominator. You know that this quadratic expression, if you'll calculate the discriminant of this expression over here, the discriminant is less than zero, which means that this expression, this quadratic expression has no real roots, which also means that this quadratic expression cannot be factorized further. So that is why we have two factored out terms in the denominator which we know that they cannot be factorized further. So we can easily use partial fractions over here in order to solve this integral over here, right? So let's do that. And we know that this expression can be easily converted to, we can simply write one over x times x squared plus x plus one as simply a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus x plus one, right? And now we can solve for our a, b and c and we can thus simplify our expression, this complicated expression over here, to simply this expression over here. So let's do that and first calculate the values of a, b, and c. We will use the same approach. We'll basically compare the numerator on the left-hand side with the numerator on the right-hand side. And in order to do that, we'll equate one with basically a times x squared plus x plus one plus bx plus c times x over here, right? And now we can combine the similar terms together. So x square coefficient will be simply a plus b over here. For x coefficient, it would be simply a plus c over here. And for the constant, it would be simply a in this case, right? So now we can compare the similar terms on the left-hand side with the similar terms on the right-hand side. We know that there is no coefficient for x square on the left-hand side and no coefficient of x as well on the left hand side. So we know that a plus b is zero, a plus c is also zero, and constant term can be related to this constant term on the left hand side. So a is equal to one. If a is equal to one, we know that a plus b equals to zero. So b would be equal to minus one, and again, c would be also equal to minus one over here. So we got our a, we got a b, we got a c as well. And now we can convert this expression over here. And this would become simply a is one, b is minus one. So a is one, b is minus one, and c is also minus one, right? And now you were calculating the integral of this expression, which would simply be calculating the integral of the first expression plus integral of second expression over here, right? And now you can easily solve for this indefinite integral over here. You can easily solve for this integral. This will be natural log of x. 
and then you can use substitution to solve this integral over here. So I'll leave the integral calculations to you, but there is one important point that you'll consider. One is that you'll add the constant of integration because you're calculating the indefinite integral. The second point is that you will get your answer in terms of x variable, but since you want your answer to be in terms of t, you will have to do this conversion. You'll have to do the conversion for your answer in terms of x to the answer in terms of the variable t in this case to get the final answer. The same process that you were doing in the substitution problems in the previous videos, right? So that's it for this video. Again, feel free to comment down in this video if you have any doubts. Follow the channel in order to get notified about the other videos that I'll be uploading. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.